One of my favorite things about visiting Japan is definitely riding the trains. Now, to the first time visitor, they can be a little bit confusing and overwhelming. In this deep dive video, I hope to demystify the Japanese train system so that you can have a good, enjoyable, and efficient time on your trip to Japan. In this video, I'm gonna be covering some background in general on Japanese trains, operators, where they run, different types of trains, covering how to buy tickets, covering the different uh, unlimited ride options that are they call passes, in particular the JR Pass. I'll be answering some frequently asked questions that I get like, Chris, are there lockers in the train stations? Chris, um, can you eat on the train? And do they really push you on the train in Tokyo in rush hour? Uh, We'll talk about how to actually ride the trains and then finally how to ride them the Japanese way in that what is the actual etiquette for properly riding the trains. Now the first area that I want to get into is just a little bit of background about trains in Japan. And uh, the first thing is Japan is famous for what is called the Shinkansen or the bullet train. Japan holds the world record for the fastest train in the world, their Japanese L0 series maglev, which has a speed record of 374 miles per hour or 602 kilometers per hour. The fastest operating train that's, that you can actually go on as a person uh, runs at 225 miles per hour or 362 kilometers per hour, still pretty fast, and they're super smooth. In 2021, last year, the Shinkansen, this bullet train around Japan, carried 195 million passengers, which is more than the number of people that were carried on domestic flights within Japan. So within the country, the bullet train, trains in general, are the more popular transportation option because frankly, they are better than airplanes. Now talking about train stations, this train station right here, this is Shinjuku station. This is the busiest train station in the world and it is in Tokyo, Japan. It has about 3.5 million people that transit through this station every single day. Let that sink into your head for a moment. 3.5 million people go through this building and this set of tracks every day. That's more people than live in the city of San Diego, the entire city of San Diego, where I grew up. The other great thing about Japanese trains, they are punctual. They are super on time, which is one of the reasons why I like riding them. You can really depend on the trains. Uh, in particular, uh, Japanese trains, are the most punctual in the world. The average delay on the main Shinkansen line in 2018, which was the last year I could find these statistics published for, uh, was less than a minute. So this is a route that's like hours long to ride it, but the trains would arrive less than a minute late on average. And when trains are delayed for five minutes, the conductor often makes an announcement apologizing for the delay because nobody could possibly expect a train to be delayed for more than five minutes. And uh, Japanese passengers, they really heavily rely on the rail transit because they take it for granted that trains operate on time. And if trains are delayed for more than an hour, like it actually may appear in the newspaper, but you know what's even worse than trains being delayed for an hour? This made like all the social media where a train in Japan left the platform 20 seconds early and everybody was like, oh my gosh, can you believe it? That train left early, you know? And in most places, most countries, 20 seconds is like, in the noise for where the train leaves, but that's how close people cut it to get on that train. They're like, oh, I got 30 seconds left. I can get a drink before I get on. Now, uh, not only are Japanese trains uh, punctual and reliable, they're also guaranteed to be incredibly quiet and incredibly clean. Let's talk about the cleaning. Every time a Shinkansen bullet train pulls into its final station, there are a team of cleaners waiting there to clean it. The average time it takes them to clean the whole train is seven minutes. And you can see right here, this is the staff of cleaners waiting for to get on that Shinkansen as the people get off. They don't cut any corners. They clean and wipe down everything. They truly feel immaculate when you get on, as opposed to some trains in other countries where you get on and you're like, 
I wonder if this train was even cleaned in this century. All right, now that I've covered just a little bit of background about why Japanese trains are amazing, I wanna talk about some of the companies that operate trains within Japan. And first, I wanna bring this one up. I'm gonna make it um, full screen here, so it's a little bit bigger. The main operator of trains in Japan is called JR, or Japan Railways. Now, it's actually not one company. It's actually six different companies broken down by its geographic region. JR East would be the, the main ones people think about it because that's the one that has Tokyo in it. JR Hokkaido, Island in the North, JR Central, Shikoku, JR West, and JR Kyushu are all different parts of JR. So they have different websites, different ticket sales offices. So when you're looking at these different things, you're like, are these all the same operator? Each one operates kind of different routes of the Shinkansen. But if you get a JR Pass, the national one, it's good for all of the Japan railways. Now, to make things a little bit more confusing, there's more than just Japan railways. There are over 200 operators of trains within Japan. Each one publishes their own timetable, their own map, their own schedule, their own tickets. They often run on their own tracks. Uh, these train companies have names like this one, Tobu is a big train operator, Odaku, Kintetsu. Um, so it's not as easy as buying that all you can ride pass for all the trains. The JR Pass, the main national pass, covers the national railways, but it doesn't cover all of these private operators. And sometimes these private trains are the best ones to get someplace, and it turns out it's actually not the national one. Like one of my favorite ways to get to Nikko from Tokyo is not to take the Shinkansen, but is actually to take this Tobu Revity train, as they call it, which is maybe their smaller version of a bullet train or a Shinkansen. Um, all right, so. Let's talk about some of the types of trains now. You've heard me use this phrase, Shinkansen, Japanese word for the bullet train that kind of looks like a bullet. This is the train that has made Japan famous around the world. It takes from Tokyo to Kyoto, two hours and 17 minutes, phenomenally quick. If you were to drive it, it's significantly longer, like nearly a day is what you'll be spending on that drive, but just a couple hours on the train. Uh, there are now slower trains from the Shinkansen. The Shinkansen, they often call the super express train, like really fast. If we go down in level, the slower train from that would be a limited express train. And this is a station that um, doesn't run in the Shinkansen lines, like they've got separate lines for other trains, but the bullet train runs on its own tracks, it has its own areas of the station. The Limited Express might run on typical tracks and it'll stop at major train stations only. Trains that are called express trains, and I'm gonna pull this up so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, so there's the Shinkansen, like a Limited Express, which is like the Narita Express from Narita Airport into Tokyo Station, and then They've got um, rapid and local trains. An example of that is the Yamanote line that runs around Tokyo. Uh, a rapid train is one that doesn't skip as many stations. It skips some stations. And then a local train is one that stops at every single station. And on many tracks, they'll have like the um, two tracks that like the local trains go on and then they'll have tracks in the middle that the fast trains go on so that as the local trains are stopped at a station, then the faster trains can just pass on through. So you may be in a train station that not all trains are gonna stop at because those are the express trains and you're at a small one. So it's really important when you're buying tickets or getting on trains or riding trains that you actually get on one that stops at the station you want to because right, they have these kind of like skip around trains. Um, they've also got different classes of service on the train. On the Shinkansen, uh, which is the top part of this chart, there's the ordinary car, which is kind of regular class or economy class, the green car, which is first class. They've got premium green on some of the Shinkansens and then the like first class uh, called Grand Class, which is gonna be the most expensive. And then on kind of the local or express trains, they just have two classes, the ordinary car and then the green car. Honestly, 
I find the trains in Japan to be so nice that the ordinary cars are just fine. If you find yourself traveling during some really busy time, then you might want to get in the green car just to get a little bit more room or a little bit of space to yourself. Um, particularly if you're traveling like, you know, during cherry blossoms or you've got a lot of luggage, uh, then you might want to consider the green car again to just get away from the rest of the people. Um, Okay, so uh, let's talk about buying tickets now. Uh, as we buy tickets for the Shinkansen, I'm gonna start with which is the bullet train. The Shinkansen, as you're buying tickets, the first thing to realize about these bullet trains is that they've got a couple different types of cars and tickets you can buy. The Shinkansen trains, the trains are really long. They can be like 13 cars long or 17 cars long. Some trains are all reserved seating, other trains have unreserved seats. And so if we look at this particular sign here in a train station, you can see in this column right above my head, it tells you on these different Shinkansen trains, like uh, train number on track 21 is reserved seats only. The whole train is reserved. And then uh, <clears throat> on the one on track 23, it says one to four is non-reserved. And those are different Tickets, you can buy a reserved seat ticket, which guarantees you a seat, or you can buy an unreserved ticket, which means you're just in that other car of a whole bunch of seats. They sell more tickets than they have seats. And so if you buy an unreserved ticket, you may actually end up standing in that Shinkansen. That's right, you may end up standing in there because they're out of room, but hey, you didn't pay extra money for the seat. Yes, it costs extra money. And then the seats cost more depending upon whether it's high season or whether it's low season. Now, uh, thinking about tickets in Japan, I'm going to make this bigger too. Uh, they are generally based on a like four part formula. Uh, if we look here in the upper left of this thing, there's the basic fare of a ticket. And so all train tickets in Japan are distance based. The longer you go, the more it costs. And so if you're riding a local train that you see in the lower left of this, you just pay the basic fare ticket. Now, if you're riding the Shinkansen, the bullet train, and we go up one level, then you get that basic fare ticket. So you're paying for the distance and now you're paying for it to go fast. Um, and then if you want a seat, then you'll pay more for that seat, depending upon what type of seat it is. Um, and so that's kind of how that general formula works. You pay for the distance, you pay for the express fee, you pay a reserved seat fee, and you pay a class of service fee. Boy, that sounds like a bunch of fees. Um, now, what are these fees like? Well, if you're going from Tokyo to Kyoto, um, the basic fare is, 8,360 yen. That's how much you would pay to take a slow train or a set of slow trains to get you there. If you're riding the Shinkansen, uh, then you're going to pay an extra 4,960 yen for that super express fee. Uh, and then if you want a seat in the low season, it's another 600 yen. So the seat fee is actually pretty cheap. Um, but if you want to be in the green car, that's another 5,000 yen. By the way, if you don't know the yen to dollar translation off the top of your head, um, obviously it changes throughout the year and right now the yen is pretty low, but I just generally drop off the last two digits and that gets you about dollars. So the 8,000 yen base fare, Tokyo to Kyoto, about 80 bucks. You add the um, Shinkansen fee at 50 bucks and then you add the seat fee six bucks so that's gonna cost you about hundred and forty dollars to go from Tokyo to Kyoto on the Shinkansen. Now how do you actually buy these tickets? Well uh, you can buy them from vending machines. They're vending machines and all of the Shinkansen stations and they look kinda like this. Uh, honestly as a visitor you are probably best off not using these. They can be a little bit confusing. Japanese IT systems really, um, they kind of just have their own look and feel. And if you're not used to them, they're just really hard to use. Uh, the places I like to go to get my tickets are from the ticket offices or their travel service centers. If you look up on this screen, there's this little picture of a person reclining in a seat. That's the icon you'll look for in a station to be like, aha, this is a ticket um, office that sells Shinkansen tickets. Not every ticket office sells the tickets for the bullet train. So if you're riding the bullet train, you wanna go to one of those offices that do sell it. 
In every Shinkansen office I've been into, they have people who speak English. On their name tags, they will have usually little flags of countries of the languages that their staff speaks. And the, you know, I should also say, you can now buy um, the bullet train tickets online, and you can also make seat reservations online too, so that's an option as well. Uh, they open up the seat reservations 30 days beforehand. You can't buy them like super, super far out. One of the reasons why I think you want to go to one of those uh, ticket offices is if you're there speaking English, then they'll print out a ticket for you, mostly in English. I say mostly in English because this is what the tickets look like and you can see there's some stuff in English and some stuff in Japanese but um, the all Japanese tickets you get out of the vending machine they're often entirely printed in, in Japanese which makes it a little harder for you and at the windows at the ticket office they'll like help circle the stuff for you and say like hey make sure you go to this platform and this seat number um, but these are all the things about like all the different things on a ticket it shows your platform the train whether it's non-smoking the seat number the car number the train name and then you can see this ticket down here this is one that is just for a seat only where that one up there was a reserved seat so this one just gets you into um, a, a car but it doesn't get you a particular seat and if you're just getting oh and so this is what like an actual ticket that I bought looked like this was a ticket going from uh, Fukuoka um, Hakata to Osaka Shin Osaka station and if you're just buying a basic fare ticket so you're riding around on the local trains they look much smaller they just look like this and they generally don't have things like um, what train, like they, what they have on there is they have where you bought it from and then they have that total amount, which is that basic fare, that distance. Honestly, you could take it to go in any direction or go to a number of stations, um, but that's what you actually get as the ticket. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is, how you put the tickets in and how you take them out in just a moment. But if you're going on unreserved trains, trains that you don't have to reserve a seat on, then honestly buying these tickets every time is hard because you have to look at a map and figure out the distance and figure out how much that costs, um, where instead you should just get one of these IC cards. And if you've been studying up on Japan, you might hear about these things called Suica, Pasmo, Aikoka, uh, Kitaka, Pitapa. These are all different IC cards that are sold in Japan. They are rechargeable cards. You tap them to go in, you tap them to go out. And these are cards that are sold by different regions across Japan, the different JR um, affiliates. Or some of them, like PASMO, is sold by the private train companies within Tokyo. However, they are like all compatible with each other. So if you're riding in Tokyo, you can buy the Suica card, which is sold in Tokyo, and you can use it in Osaka. Although you'll see the signs in Osaka that say you want to use this ICOCA card, um, you can use the Suica card there, the ICOCA card there. So just buy one wherever your first place is and use it across the country, load it up. It costs a thousand yen to pretty much buy any of these cards. It comes with a 500 yen like deposit on it that you can get refunded to you uh, when you're leaving the country. But honestly, that's like five US dollars. I just keep these cards and then I refill them every time. A lot of people ask me, Chris, can you load these with credit cards? And the answer is no, you can only load them uh, with cash. You have to load them with cash. But the nice thing about these cards is in addition to riding the trains, you can use them to uh, buy drinks from vending machines. You can also use them to buy things at convenience stores. So if you're buying food or things like that, you can buy it there. So if you've got like money left over on these cards, just use it to buy a bunch of food at 7-Eleven or Lawson Station or one of the convenience stores. Now, you might be saying, well, Chris, how do I figure out what train to ride? And you know what? There's the old school way. You can go to the train station and you can look up at this map. And then you can figure out like which way do I go? How much does it cost? Uh, and like the little numbers you see on this map, those that's, that's the cost from the train station that I'm at when I took this picture to the route that you want to go. Of course, the challenge with this is you got to go to the station and then it's only going to show the trains that are like on that line. So this are the Kintetsu trains, but they're not the JR trains or other trains. So the 
best way um, to really figure out how you want to get around is either to use Google Maps or to use Hyperdia. And so I get a lot of questions about this, and so I'm actually gonna show you what these things uh, look like right now. And as I do that, I just need to move a couple things around on my screen so that I can share this with you and show you what it looks like. All right, so when I click this button, okay, you'll see Google Maps. We're taking a look at Japan right here. Uh, and so let's say we want to go from Tokyo, I need to learn how to type better. We wanna go from Tokyo Station to Shibuya Station. And if you know the station names, just go ahead and type those in. And um, you know, often Google Maps has a tendency to default to driving directions, but you'll wanna come in here and click transit. And then as we look at this, it'll come up and it'll give you and say, hey, there's a few different options. The number one recommended option is the Yamanote line right here. It tells you, uh, and that's this one in green right here. This is the Yamanote line. It says uh, it departs every five minutes. It's currently one minute late, <laughs> one minute late, and it costs 200 yen. You can get a few more details where it'll show you and it'll say, uh, what platform you pick it up from, and how many stops it takes. This one takes 11 stops to go from Tokyo to Shibuya Station. Uh, or maybe you want to walk and take the Ginza line. This is a subway. Um, that's also 200 yen because it's the same distance, and so that's the cost in Tokyo. But you can also use this to go further places if you want to see like the bullet train you can say hey what's it take to go from Tokyo Station to Kyoto Station and as Google Maps thinks there for a little bit it says hey the way you want to go you want to take the Takedo Sanyo Shinkansen uh, the next one is at 1 p.m. that's going to cost you about 14,000 yen or about $140 it goes every 20 minutes, and then you can see the details right there. Uh, four stops on the Nozomi, which is the fastest of the bullet trains. That's the route that it takes. But you can see, there, there's that, you might be thinking, well, Chris, aren't there a lot of other, other options to get from Tokyo to Kyoto? What if I want to take some of those other options? Well, then you want to use this thing called Hyperdia. This is the super detailed search, and it'll give you every option under the sun. And... Uh, this website, you want to basically just pay attention to these two boxes right here. You can type in, uh, and I had done this before, so that's why it's already here. You can say, hey, I want to go from Tokyo to Kyoto, and uh, you can then click search. Although it's got these, like, a whole bunch of things for, like, uh, do you want to take planes, airports, shuttles, this and that. Wow, it gets really complicated. You can just hide that. Type in a station you're going from, a station you're going to, click search, and then you will get a number of different options. And so it'll show and say, well, hey, this one uh, leaves, you know, six minutes from now, this one's 15 minutes from now. These different types of Shinkansens where it says here, Nozomi, Hikari, Kodama, these equate to different speeds of Shinkansen that stop at more stations. This shows you how fast the train is. This one is that uh, like just a little over two hours the Nozomi, the fastest one. This one's a little bit slower. The Hikari is slower. The Kodama is even slower. It stops at more stations. If you have a JR Pass, you actually can't take the fastest Shinkansen. You have to take the slower Shinkansen. So that's worthwhile to look at. And if you decide, well, I don't want to pay for the Shinkansen. I want to take some of the slower trains. This is how you would go if you didn't want to take the Shinkansen. You want to take the scenic route. It's going to take you like five hours by those sorts of trains. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different options here. So Hyperdia is your best bet if you really want to go into detail. When people leave comments for me on my videos and say, Chris, how do I get from here to here? What's the best way? These are the two things I look at. I start here in Google Maps, get maybe my best route, and then I go into Hyperdia and look at other options. Um, all right, so now I want to go into the JR Pass and Passes, but before I do that, I want to take some comments from the live stream chat, see what questions uh, you've got out there for the viewers that are on the live stream. But before I do that, I want to drink, because I am thirsty. What am I drinking today? I am drinking a passion fruit mango tea from Share tea, which is really quite good. It's fruity, you can see it's orange. As it comes up on my straw, quite refreshing. Uh, all right, 
in the live chat as I move things around again so that I can see the live chat. Um, Peter asks if there's any Shinkansen museums. There are definitely train museums, but I don't know of a Shinkansen museum. Uh, Alex says, I wish they had a rail pass upgrade for the Nozomi. I, I do too. It's really nice when you don't have the JR pass and you can take any train that you want to book those Nozomis because they go more often. The problem with the JR pass is then you're with a whole bunch of the um, tourists, frankly, and they've got a lot of luggage, and uh, I really like the Nozomis better because then if you're paying for it, generally there's a lot less luggage on those trains. Uh, Art asks, is it socially acceptable to drink alcohol? Can I get smashed if I stay quiet and respectful? Art, absolutely. Um, here's my however comma, and I'll, I'll go more detail into this uh, in the eating section, but if you're on a a, like a, a local train, like a like a train in the city center, then people don't really drink on those trains because people are just kind of like packed into those trains commuting in Tokyo. But if you're on uh, like a long distance train that has um, tables on it, then people drink all the time. You will see a lot of actually like Japanese housewives often having their like weekend travel parties and they've all got like beer or wine or things like that. So it's definitely super popular to drink on the train. Just don't get so wasted that you're bugging people. Art asks if they sell bentos on the train. Some trains they do. Um, you'll just need to check the particular operator and the route as to whether they have food or snacks on that train. Uh, AJ says, how do I get one of those cool shirts? One of the Yellow Productions cool shirts? Uh, you can pick one up at the Yellow Production shop, link in the description below, uh, or you can win one. I give away a Yellow Production shirt every uh, live stream, although today I'll be giving away a Spunky Princess shirt. So if you want the Yellow Production shirt, you gotta, gotta buy them right now. Uh, Vix says, I'm surprised the Japanese smoke on trains. You know, there's still a lot of smoking that goes on in Japan. Uh, it is, uh, it is bizarre, really. Uh, Points Traveler said, I had the Ito and green tea in a can in Maui. It was delicious. I like Ito and green tea for sure. I've got some down in a bottle downstairs. Uh, and then Michael has helped me out saying with the current exchange rate is that 14,000 yen is now like $100. Yeah, I guess it is right now. <laughs> Although my math is, you know, somebody's probably gonna be watching this in a year or two from now and I think the yen will be, pro it, like it, it usually ranges about that 100 yen to a US dollar. Uh, Art also says life is so much better with Google Maps. Oh, it is, everything is better with Google Maps. Um, and uh, then Kathy asked why Japan had so many IC cards, uh, because originally they weren't compatible. Um, and so Kathy, you have one IC card in Melbourne, Australia, and then there's a different one in Sydney. And so that was the situation in Japan that every different city issued an IC card. And then you had to have all these IC cards if you travel around and instead they just um, consolidated, well, they didn't consolidate, but they built a system such that they're compatible. So if you bought them in Tokyo and you loaded your money up in Tokyo uh, and then you're in Osaka, when you tap in the gate there, it charges your account that is back in Tokyo. Um, and uh, Art asks uh, if Google Maps covers it well and it uh, didn't used to. Like when I did this video a couple years ago for like how to, well, maybe four years ago, how to ride trains in Tokyo, uh, it didn't, uh, but now Google Maps is actually really good for directions in Japan. Alex asks, uh, have I tried to pay for trains with my Apple Watch? Not yet. I have not yet. Um, so if anybody else has, uh, let me know your success with that. Um, and Art says, how early should I book? 30 days uh, in advance is generally when the seat reservations open up. So that's about how early you should book. All right. Uh, and then Chris says, is it easier to fly or take the train from Tokyo to Sapporo? Like, I guess it depends where you are. Are you near the airport or are you not near the airport? If you're near Tokyo Station, it's easier to take the train to Sapporo because you leave from central Tokyo, you arrive in the central Sapporo. If you are near Haneda Airport or you're near Narita Airport, then it's a lot faster to take the um it's a lot faster to take the flights. Uh, Tokyo to Sapporo is the busiest domestic airline route anywhere. There's a 747 that leaves every hour, so you've got your um, pretty good choices for those flights. Jessica says, would I need an IC card if I have a JR pass? Yes, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, we're gonna talk through passes here in just a second. Uh, 
Canella says, have you used the airport limousine bus from Narita to Rapongi? Not Rapongi, but I've used the friendly airport limousine bus numerous times. If you are staying at a hotel that the friendly airport limousine bus drops off at, then it's a great option to get there. Um, I like it. Uh, we often uh, have done that um, staying in uh, Shinjuku. Now the Narita Express goes from Narita to Shinjuku, but like sometimes it takes like an hour to get on the next one, and sometimes it's really convenient to just take the friendly airport bus because again, it'll take you from the airport maybe to your hotel directly. It depends where you're staying, but if you are staying at one, then that's just super convenient because you don't have to drag all of your luggage on the trains. Uh, and then Hotel Production says, I did pay for a train with my Apple Watch. It actually worked great. Uh, all right, thank you for that report. Art asks, I've been on a ferry boat in Japan. I've been on a number of boats in Japan. Um, so, like, yes is the answer. Uh, Gene says, would you recommend to purchase train tickets online or when you arrive at the airport? Me, personally, I do it once we actually get to Japan because things change, your flight might be delayed, all those sorts of things. We've never had an issue booking um, our train tickets or our seats. There's like so many of them. You know, if you book them a few days out, we've never had a real big issue. Obviously, if you're maybe traveling right around the new year when it's super busy, you might wanna book them sooner rather than later. Um, but we generally just book them when we get there. Johnny says, why don't you live in Japan? Um, that's a good question. I like Japan. Uh, I think it would be a fun place uh, to live for a while, although I don't know that I would love the the work environment. Like from my friends that live and work in Japan, they're like, oh, you work, you work a lot of hours in Japan. So I love the country. I don't know that I would love working there. And then you say, well, Chris, you'd be a YouTuber. Yeah, maybe I could be one of the, one of the Japan vloggers. Uh, Joe says the Suica card available for purchase at the Haneda Airport. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just when you go to the... <clears throat> airport train station at Haneda Airport, you can buy a Suica card. It might not be a Suica card, it might be um, like a Pasmo card, but whatever, if it's Pasmo or Suica, it's the same thing. Loads up the same way, works the same way. Whatever the IC card they would sell there works on all the, all the trains in Japan, just like all of the other ones do. Big Zeddy says, apologies if anyone asks this, but is the Osaka Airport to Kyoto train journey straightforward? Um, uh, I, you know what, ask, ask me that again when I do further Q&A because I'll just, I'll pull up Google Maps and we'll take a look at it. All right, but now I want to talk about JR Passes because there's been a lot of question about passes. Um, so bringing up pictures again, there are numerous rail passes across Japan, but the most popular one is the JR Pass, the Japan Railways Pass. This allows you, if you get the, the national JR Pass, it allows you to ride all JR trains, including the ones for all the different operators, JR Kyushu, JR Shikoku, JR West, JR Central, JR East, and JR Hokkaido. With the JR Pass, you can also ride the JR Bus, the JR Ferry, and the Tokyo Monorail from Haneda Airport. The JR Pass is not valid on any private train lines. The 200 other operators I talked about, Odaku, Kintetsu, Tobu, the Tokyo Subway, um, the JR Pass does not work on any of those things. There are also many regional JR Passes uh, that are sold by those different JR affiliates. Um, generally, the national JR Pass is only for tourists. So people who like call Japan their home, can't buy it. It has to be bought by someone who has a um, foreign passport and a tourist visa to go into Japan. And the way these passes work or the way you use them, because they're like, they're big things. They look like the size of your passport generally, is you don't put them in the ticket wicket to go through. You have to find the um, uh, part of the station where the actual like station manager or station personnel work and then you show them your pass and they look at the dates to make sure it's valid and then they just let you in. So the JR passes are these all you can ride passes and it's kind of like this by this exception thing. You flash it to them and they're like, all right, come on in the station, ride any train you want. The cost of the JR passes, they have um, different day versions so you can buy a seven day pass, a 14 day pass, or a 21 day pass. The seven day ordinary pass, which is for um, the um, not first class seats, is 29,650 yen. So about 
300 US dollars. Somebody's gonna correct me and say it's cheaper, but I'm gonna continue using my 100 yen to one US dollar conversion because it's easy math to do on a live stream. If you wanna get the green pass for seven days, it's an extra 10,000 yen or an extra 100 bucks, so that's 39,000 yen. 29,000, 39,000 for a regular class or green car. Uh, if you're getting the seven day pass converted dollars, that's about $35 a day. You need to use those seven days on consecutive days. They're generally cheaper if you buy them online before you go um, than if you buy them when you arrive in Japan. You do not have to activate them immediately when you get there. Generally, when Osigro and I go to Japan, if we're gonna be hanging around in Tokyo for three or four days, we don't activate our JR Pass. We just use our IC card, our Suica card, to go around Japan, and then when we're gonna go out to go around Tokyo, and then when we leave Tokyo, because we're gonna take the Shinkansen, the bullet train now, then we activate our Japan Rail Pass starting on that day, because it's best maximized when you're going long distances. And so if we get the seven day pass, we'll maximize and plan all of our long distance travel in those seven days and then plan our short distance trips on the other sides of it. The classic JR Pass itinerary is to take the bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto uh, round trip. So if you were paying for that fare each way, 13,000 yen, um, round trip fares 26,000 yen. I told you that the total pass is 29,000 yen. So you can see just by taking that round trip, you've almost paid for the whole pass assuming that's two days you took it, now you've got five more days of rail travel that's absolutely free, icing on the cake. Uh, if you're taking that Narita Express in from Narita into Tokyo, that's 3,000 yen, so right there, you've made up your whole cost and already saved some money. I mentioned earlier that the JR Pass covers Shinkansen trains, the bullet trains, on all the different lines, except it does not cover the Nozomi Shinkansen on the Tokaido line, which is the fastest train. That's the one that's like two hours and 11 minutes. It does cover the Hikari, the second fastest, and the Kodama. Um, and uh, it's a, like, it ends up being like 20 or 30 more minutes taking the slower trains. Um, though the, the downfall is that there are significantly more Nozomi super fast trains than there are the slower ones. And so you'll end up having to wait longer to take your JR Pass trains. And with the JR Pass, if you want to get a reserved seat on the Shinkansen, those are free. You just go to the ticket office, you show them your JR Pass, you tell them what train you want to take, what day, what time, and then they will give you the reserved seat tickets for that train. I usually find when I go to those ticket stations, I like to write down on a piece of paper um, what train I want, what time, and then I just show it to them because that helps avoid any um, translation issues. Uh, oh, and then just to give you like a hard number of how many Nozomi trains there are versus JR Pass eligible ones, Nozomi trains, the super fashion consent that aren't covered by the JR Pass, leaving Tokyo Station every hour, there are seven of those and then there are three of the ones that are actually JR Pass eligible. So what, like a third of the um, Shinkansens between Kyoto and Tokyo are eligible for the JR Pass. All right. Um, now, the JR Pass is really great for like day trips out of Tokyo. Uh, if you wanna go to uh, Nagano to see the snow monkeys, round trip, that'd be 16,000 yen. If you wanna go to Nikko to see the temples, round trip, that'd be 10,000 yen. If you wanna go to Nagoya to see the castle, round trip, that's 20,000 yen. And so you can see how easily you can like triple your value on a JR Pass. If you're using it a lot, then you'll want to stay really near the bullet train station so you maximize your long, uh, where you go long distance. Uh, so now some classic areas that you don't want to get the JR Pass for. If you're going to uh, Hakone, which is the region around Mount Fuji, those aren't JR routes around there. Those are owned by a different train company. And so you'll actually want to get this thing called the Hakone Free Pass. That'll give you a few days of transit around the Hakone region. If you are going to Nikko from Shinjuku, uh, then you'll actually want to take the Tobu train, which is not the Shinkansen, that's a private operator. Uh, and if you're going to Osaka and Kyoto, a lot of private train lines around there, you'll want to get this pass called the Kansai Through Pass. That's the pass right there. 
Uh, all right, and then remember my pro tip, if you are getting a JR Pass, you don't need to activate it right away. Plan your trip so that you maximize your JR Pass travel time. All right, now that we've covered passes, let's talk about riding the trains. And uh, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta go to the train station and you gotta find where your train is on what platform. And Japanese train stations, the major ones are frankly overwhelming for first time visitors. There's so many people, there's so many tracks, there's so many trains, there's so many levels. In Shinjuku station, there's like an app just for Shinjuku station to help find your way because even locals get lost in that station. And what makes it really confusing too, in addition to platforms, there's a ton of exits like Shinjuku station has something like 40 plus or more exits and they, they have similar names. There's like a you know, um, south exit, there's a new south exit, there's a southern terrace exit, and you're like, those are all different exits, and they're all in different places, and so you might see an exit that's like, oh, that's my exit, and it's like, no, no, that was just one that had a similar name, but actually when you go out at your 20 minutes away from the exit that you actually wanted to take. But first thing you gotta do is not exit, you gotta get on the train. If you're taking the Shinkansen trains, uh, they generally all leave from uh, one particular area in the station because they have their own tracks and there's a special gate to access the Shinkansen trains themselves. So uh, you'll want to find your platform and you can see here it tells you like, hey, this is where uh, the Shinkansen goes. This is track 11. It's up that escalator. But when in doubt, ask the train station staff. You'll find not all train station staff in Japan speaks English, um, but if you find a booth that has a little I on it, uh, the people at the information desks typically speak English. Uh, you can show them your ticket if you have a ticket, or if you've got something written down about where you want to go, that's really useful. All right, you get up to the platform, and then what do you need to do? You need to find where your car stops. If you're on a big train that has a lot of cars and you have a reserved seat in that car, or you're in the unreserved car, you'll need to figure out where that is. Seriously, don't just stand on the platform and then hope to find your car once the train arrives. You won't have enough time to get to your car. The Shinkansen stops for a very limited amount of time at each station. Time is of the essence. Uh, and so you got to get in, you got to get out quick. And so on the ground uh, in all these stations or on signs, they will tell you where each car stops. So go find that place and... Um, stand there where your car is going to arrive. Now, it's also really important if we look at this sign to realize that, uh, you know, every like few minutes, different Shinkansen's or different trains pull in on these tracks. And so you can see uh, track 15, there's a train at uh, 2 p.m., 2.21, and 2.39, and sometimes they can be even quicker. So make sure you're actually getting on the correct train because they go so quick. Uh, you might find that you're like, oh, this is... You know, it's one o'clock and my train's at 105. I should get on this train that got here. That could very likely be a different train. Uh, in the major train stations, the signs rotate between English and Japanese, so you should have no issue trying to figure out the train. When there are multiple trains that go through on the platform, there will be lines on the floor to stand for like the current train, and there'll be lines behind that to stand for the next train. Uh, you know, I guess when in doubt, pick a line and stand in it. If it's not for your train, then it's the next line. But you can see they stand in an orderly fashion where the feet are, where the numbers are for different cars, the walkways in the middle. Um, and again, when in doubt, ask some staff that's on the platform and say, hey, where do I, where do I go for car number 13? Or just show them the ticket and they'll know what you're looking for. Um, all right, a lot of people ask me about luggage. Chris, where do I put my luggage? And on the bullet trains, um, it's kind of like an airplane in that there's like overhead, not bins, but there's an overhead shelf. That's where you put your luggage. Uh, if you've got huge luggage, what they're making you do now on some of the Shinkansen routes, um, in particular, uh, if you're going on the Tokaido line, which is Tokyo to Osaka, the Sanyo line, Osaka to Fukuoka, and the Kyushu line, you have to reserve a seat that has oversized luggage space if your luggage is bigger than 161 centimeters. Length plus width plus height. That's how they come up with this. So measure the length, measure the width, measure the height. If it's bigger than 161 centimeters, 
you need to reserve a oversized luggage seat. It's not like a seat for your luggage, but it's a seat that is at the back of the car and it has some space behind it where you can put that big luggage because luggage that's that big won't fit in the overhead uh, and then they limit you to two pieces carrying on and you can reserve these seats up to 30 days ahead of time. If you're doing this at the ticket booths, um, just tell them, hey, I need a seat with oversized luggage space. If you're doing it from a vending machine, there's a checkbox for that. If you're doing it online, there's a similar checkbox for it. Um, okay, so now you have got on the train, you are getting to your uh, stop, it's your stop. A lot of people who take trains in other countries, slow trains across Europe, you know, you leisurely wait for the train to stop, then you get your stuff down, then you wander to the door. The Shinkansen will have left already. <laughs> and you'll be like, I can't get up. You need to like plan ahead of time, like look at your watch, when are you gonna arrive? Before you're gonna arrive, start getting your stuff ready so that as soon as the train comes to a stop, you can make your way to that door because it's not gonna wait for you very long before it pulls off again. Um, when you are on the trains, uh, many of them, the like higher tech ones, will have signed to tell you, hey, these are the next stops. This is how long it is to the next stop. This is like, um, where was I with this one? Uh, Hakata, right? Um, so, uh, and Fukuoka Airport. So this was in Fukuoka right there. Uh, but you can see these different stops. They'll tell you things like, hey, this is where you connect to the Shinkansen. This is where you can connect to other lines. Not all lines have these digital screens, and then they'll rotate uh, between Japanese and English. Now, if you don't get on one of those trains, the other best way is to just count the number of stops. When we looked at Google Maps earlier, you could see how many stops it is from your station to the next one. If it's 10 stops, count the 10 stops that you go on, and then look for the signs in the stations as you go to tell you what uh, station you are at. Every station has really good signage. Pro tip for you, if you're going out into rural Japan, you're going to a small station and then you need to get back from there, take a picture of the timetable. All of the small stations that just have like a few lines through them will all have these timetables. And so then you can see, okay, I need to get back at, you know, 7.01 or 7.15 uh, to take the train to get where I'm going. It's really useful just to have that on your phone, particularly if you're someplace you don't have a lot of service, so you can help remember what time you need to get back. Uh, all right, now that we've talked about riding the trains, I wanna talk about um, some frequently asked questions that I get, which uh, first one is about food. People always ask about, Chris, what about food on the trains? Can I eat on the train? Um, and so, People generally don't eat on the local trains within the city center, um, but people on trains with reserved seats, uh, it's all about eating. It's eating time. That's what you should do on those seats because you know, if you're taking a three-hour train, it's a real great way to eat your lunch right there. Every big train station has shops that sell ekiben. Eki is the Japanese word for train station. Ekiben is a train station bento. Bento is a... Um, generally lunchbox that's kind of divided like this. This was an ekiben that we got in Sendai, Japan. Sendai is famous for gyuton, which is cow tongue. Uh, and so those are slices of cow tongue right there, some rice and some pickled veggies. It was actually quite delicious. Um, and different regions have different ekibens. I did get some questions about, can you buy them on board uh, or do you need to buy them before? I would buy them before because you don't know what you're gonna get when you're on board. They might not have them. They might sell them out. Buy them before you get on board. Although you will see some trains that do roam around with food carts um, and you know we've gotten some really good gyoza and things like that on trains. So maybe save that for like extra food that you want when you're still hungry after your bento. Some Trains have vending machines on them too where you can buy drinks. When you're done with your food, uh, throw your trash away on the train. Don't like stuff it in the pocket. Don't like leave it in your seat. They got plenty of trash cans. Throw it away on the train. Don't take it with you into the train station because it's harder to find trash cans in the train station. Use the trash can on the train. Japan is notorious for having very few trash cans around the country. Kathy doesn't like the cow tongue, Kathy says. It looks disgusting. It's actually quite delicious, Kathy. Uh, if you like beef, I think you would like cow tongue. People just go like, oh, it might, what can a tongue possibly taste like? See, but dining with Derek right here, clearly a foodie, says, looks great to me. I love cow tongue. 
Um, Point Trailer says Sendai is also famous for the home of abroad in Japan. Sendai is also famous uh, as the uh, town that OC Girl went to for an exchange school. So there you go. I, I don't think she did meet Chris Broad from abroad in Japan. Uh, and uh, Brandon says, as long as it's a long distance, it's definitely needed to eat lunch, for sure. Uh, and you know, between the two of us, now it's three of us, but it was two of us going to Japan before the Spunky Princess, we might actually get like three Ekiben bento boxes and some snacks and some drinks and again, beer. Drink your beer on the train, no problem. Another question I get a lot is, um, Chris, what about what about rush hour? Uh, I've heard that they push people on the trains, that I, I've heard that they employ pushers. Do they really employ pushers? And the answer is yes. In the busy train stations in Tokyo, they really have people that push um, you, if you're in that station at the time, onto the train because they are so crowded. You do not want to ride the trains in central Tokyo at rush hour. The evening rush is definitely worse than the morning rush. Just plan your days to kind of avoid 5 to 7 p.m. leaving the city center of Tokyo. Eat dinner and then get on the train at 7 o'clock to go somewhere. Not a big deal. Uh, spend more money and go in the green car. It won't be as crowded. Um, now, if you are on such a busy train, and you're pushed onto it, then when you get to the next platform, you'll likely just, you'll have to get off the train because there's so many people on it and then they'll be pushing you out. And so just get off back onto the platform and then you get back on kind of with the ebb and the flow. It's a little bit like the tide. With this case, um, you know, like when you're on the train, you know, figure out a good place to keep your hands because that might be where your hands are until you get to the next stop for a while. Um, Another question I get a lot is, uh, what about lockers? And most big train stations have lockers. Um, these are what the lockers look like in Japanese train stations. The way you lock and unlock most of them is by using your IC card that I talked about before. You can see on this one right above the, right below the screen right there, there's a tap thing for the IC card. You would tap, you do like pick on the screen, you pick what size locker you want, different prices for different ones, for how long you want it. You tap your IC card, it will open one of the lockers, you put your stuff in there, um, and then when you come back to unlock it, you tap your IC card again, because it's the same one, then it unlocks your locker. If you want to make sure you don't lose your IC card, because that's the equivalent of your key, and you want to remember where your lockers were. This is like the biggest tip I can tell you about using lockers because um, train stations in Japan are so big, there won't just be one bank of lockers. There's going to be a ton of them. And so remember the level, the place, the floor. Take a picture of it. Take a picture of the indicator. So if you can't find it, you can ask the train station staff to help you find it again. All right. Uh, and now, finally, I want to cover uh, train etiquette. What's the etiquette? for riding trains in Japan. And you'll see uh, when you ride the trains, like all these kinds of posters that look like this to tell you like, please be considerate, how to use the priority seats because they are really big on their etiquette in Japan. And so I've got this divided into two sections, what to do in the station and what to do riding the train so that the locals don't give you the stink eye. I'm gonna go through this pretty rapid fire and then we'll get to final Q and A. So in the station, um, keep your head up when you're walking. Don't be looking at your phone because people walk so fast you'll end up running into people or they'll run into you. So keep your head up. Uh, don't block passageways with a whole bunch of luggage. Tourist, you might have suitcases, this and that, you know, stay by the wall, make sure people can pass. When you're going through the ticket gates, don't stop moving before or after because there's a lot of people going through those ticket gates. Make sure you get your tickets ready before you get near the gate so that, that way when you're at the gate, you can just move on through. Oh, and by the way, the way the tickets, all the tickets work in Japan, you put your ticket in when you start your journey. You need to keep it with you because then you put that same ticket in when you leave. If you actually have a paper ticket, it'll keep it. Um, when you leave or if you're using the IC card, then you tap in and then you tap out. Um, on the floor, there's going to be a whole bunch of walking directions. Tell you like, if you're here, go this way. If you're here, go this way. Follow those different arrows that are on the floor. Um, escalators. There's a whole controversy in Japan about should you walk 
or stand on the escalator. And the Japanese government has really been trying to promote standing on the escalator instead of walking because people trip when they're walking. Um, I would say just go with the flow. Uh, but if you have luggage, be careful with your luggage on the escalators. There's so many people, you might wanna wait till it's less busy or go find the um, few and far between elevator. All right etiquette for riding the train and I had to put up a yellow train. This is a train in, um, oh, where is it? Uh, it's down in Kyushu. It'll come to me. Um, all right. Uh, but riding the train, um, first, like when you're boarding the train, uh, wait for people to exit, stand in line. And then as people get off, then it's your turn to board. Board quickly because the train doors don't stay open for long. As you get in the car, move into the car, like in the end of the car to make space for others to board. Don't just hang around the door and clog up that space. If you've got a backpack with you, take it off uh, and put it on the front of you or keep it down at your feet so you're not hitting other people with your backpack. Uh, if you got big luggage, avoid blocking the door with it. Um, I like to often just put it like near the door, but by the seats, um, or you can have it like around the central um, pole, maybe around the door. If you're in one of the ones that doesn't have an actual luggage area. Talk quietly. This is one that Western tourists sometimes miss, um, but when you're on Japanese trains, they are very quiet. And maybe not the train itself, but the people are very quiet. Um, so talk quietly. Some trains will have quiet cars or quiet sections. If you're in something that says quiet, don't talk at all. That's the like, we're just, we're just silent right here. No cell phones. Well, you can have the cell phone with you and you can text and you can play games, but no talking on the cell phone and no um, playing music on the cell phone. If you're wearing headphones, uh, make sure the volume's just so that you can hear it, not that all of your neighbors hear it. When you're sitting on the train, they're busy. So don't put your stuff next to you. Um, don't take up more than one seat if the train's busy. Uh, offer seats to those in need, and there are priority seats. The priority seats are just for those in need, um, so keep those open for people that need them. If you're there in rush hour uh, and you're on a train that has um, like just seats along the side and then you're standing, you want to stand facing the people that are seated so that your chest faces their face. Don't put your butt in their face. Uh, and then finally, during rush hour, many cars are designated as women only because um, Japanese men can be kind of gropey during rush hour, I hear, which is why these cars exist. Um, so for women, you might want to take those women only cars. They'll say women only on the side. There'll be places on the platform to stand on them. Uh, and uh, men in that case don't get on the women only cars during rush hour. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, if I didn't answer your question going through this deep dive, go ahead and ask it now. If you're watching the archive, ask it in there and uh, I will respond to your comment, but I'll also respond to your questions in the live stream. Put a question mark at the end of it so I know it's a question. We'll go through a few questions and then I'll give away um, a spunky princess t-shirt uh, today to someone who can answer one of my oh so challenging questions. All right, um, so uh, Hoarder Eric says, when's your next Vegas trip? Soon, it'll be soon. Art says, is there Wi-Fi? Depends on the train. Um, the Tobu Revity Express that we took, it had Wi-Fi on it, um, so uh, depends. Points Traveler says, can you use the Suica card on Apple Pay? It's like, can you use Apple Pay to load it up? I don't. I don't think so. Um, like can you, you can you load the Suica card onto Apple Pay? I think somebody said they paid with an Apple Watch, um, <clears throat> but to be honest, I I use a I use an Android device, so uh, I am not too sure on that one. Samuel asks if we've been back to Farm Tomita. We've been to Farm Tomita once, but we haven't been back. We did enjoy our one trip there. Dining with Derek says, "What's the longest train ride you've taken in Japan?" Uh, that would probably have to be Tokyo to um, al almost uh, Hokkaido, like just to the north of the main island. Um, I forget, there's like a castle up there that I forget the name of the city, um, but we took the uh, bullet train up to there. Art says, do I prefer New York City or Tokyo subway? Tokyo subway, hands down. I mean, <coughs> I think Art, you said uh, New York is more colorful. Yeah, yeah, New York is more colorful. Tokyo's more clean. 
and on time and efficient. Interesting though, New York City subways open 24 hours a day where um, Tokyo subway trains all shut down overnight. So after about midnight, between midnight and 5 a.m., don't really expect to be going anywhere. Um, you definitely want to pay attention to the last train time because there really is a last tra train time. Tiki Tours, Omori, Omori Castle. Thank you very much, Tiki Tours Japan. I appreciate that. That is indeed where, and if I uh, had more brain power to think about it, not um, on the live stream where my brain doesn't work all the time, uh, it would have come to me. But I appreciate the virtual brain, Tiki Tours. Uh, Celsius says, do you have a video on travel to Japan with kids? Not yet. Um, you know, but when we take the spunky princess there, I will make one of those. Uh, Art says it's funny seeing salary men running for the last train. For sure, because um, they've been drinking at the bars or the restaurants on their late night business meetings. And then they're like, I better get on that last train because if not, I'm staying in the capsule hotel tonight. Indeed, they will. Um, P says, yes, you can load the Suica card onto the Apple wallet and use your phone. All right. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, P, I appreciate it. Uh, Brooklyn Joe says, I assume OC Girl speaks Japanese. Uh, indeed, she does, Brooklyn Joe. Um, Dining with Derek says, when is your next trip to Japan? When they remove their kind of mask mandates. We don't really want to go to Japan and have to wear masks all the time. We know uh, it's not really a mandate per se, but um, once Japan finally is like, right now they're saying, please don't wear masks outside. Um, when they say like, hey, you don't need to wear them on the trains and things like that anymore, that's uh, probably when we'll go. Points Traveler says, would I ever stay in a capsule hotel? I would to make a video. I don't think I ever would to spend the night. Mark says, uh, question. Uh, three people, is it kosher to turn the seats around so we're all facing each other the whole time from Kyoto, Tokyo, reserved seating matter? Um, well, if it's three people, you can't really, like if it's six people, you could turn the seats around or four people, but not three really. And I would say on the Shinkansen, I generally don't see people turn the seats around. They're generally all turned to face one direction and then you kind of sit in them that way. There are some trains and they're not the Shinkansen, but like um, the Tobu Revity Express or things like that. There are some trains that have like seats and things like that that you can face each other and then you should book those. Um, yeah, uh, so, but if you're three people, uh, in that case, there are the most of the Shinkansen are three seats on one side and two seats on the other. And so just book your side that has three seats. Samuel says, have you ever seen the squat toilets? For sure, uh, I have seen the squat toilets. There are definitely squat toilets in Japan, more in the rural areas uh, than in the major areas. Art says, what's the most scenic train trip in Japan? Uh, there's a lot of scenic train trips in Japan, but I generally like the trains in Hakone. They're really neat, which is this area near Mount Fuji. Um, you take like a cogwheel thing to a ropeway to a whole, it's like a boat. It's a whole um, pretty fun trip. Uh, Brandon says, these past three live streams making me think you would like to visit Japan within the next six months. I would love to visit Japan within the next six months. I was kind of like doubling down on the Japan live streams just because it's it's finally open now. And so these like people are actually like, Chris, I'm going to Japan and I'm getting a lot of these questions. And so rather than just answer them one by one, I figured I'd make a couple of these videos. And then when people leave the comments, I can say like, hey, watch this one right here. Um, Danielle says, are the signs for where women stand for the women's only train cars written in English? They sure are. It says women only car. And you'll see that um, on the platforms and they will uh, generally be pink. Kid Blue asks, I've ever had lingua tacos. Uh, I have not. I probably should. Um, so uh, I've, like, I've seen them in many Mexican restaurants. I've just never ordered them. Uh, no Filter says, how was the Osaka subway? Great. Just as good as the Tokyo subway. Uh, another fantastic uh, Japanese public transportation. P says, what's the most surprising thing you ate in Japan you didn't think you would like? Horse sashimi. Um, if you haven't seen my video on it, I have a whole video about eating horse sashimi, but we ate that on our last trip to um, Fukushima. And uh, like many of you right now might be thinking like, gosh, that sounds pretty gross. But if you close your eyes and ate it, you could almost think it was like tuna instead of horse. It was pretty good. Uh, Art says, can you offer a public tour of Japan? I would join. Art, thank you for the question. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll keep that in my back pocket. Uh, Ryan says, what are the best places to eat on the North Shore in Oahu? Giovanni's Shrimp Truck. There you go. 
Art says, is Nagoya any good to visit? Doesn't get any mentions. Uh, Art, I have a video on the Nagoya Castle. If you look in the description of this video, I'll make it a pinned comment once it's done. Um, I have a, Nag I think I, I don't know, maybe I don't have a Nagoya playlist because I just have one video on it. But if you search for Nagoya Yellow Productions, you'll find the video that I did on Nagoya Castle. I think it's a really neat castle. Um, you can also visit like some of the Toyota production facilities. So I think it's worthwhile as a stop. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is now time to give away a Spunky Princess shirt uh, to a lucky listener that can answer one of my questions. And uh, my question for you is, there was a train that I talked about at the beginning of this video that left the platform early. How, how much time early did that train leave the platform that people were aghast to be like, oh, oh my gosh, how could a train leave so early from a platform? If you answer that correct question correctly, you will win a Spunky Princess shirt headed to you anywhere in the world. Uh, and if you don't get to win one and you want to buy one, head over to the Yellow Production shop, shop.yellow-productions.com. And if you're wondering when is the next live stream, head over to update.yellow-productions.com. Uh, and sign up for the email list. Next week is Thanksgiving week, so uh, there may not be one next week with Thanksgiving festivities. Not sure yet, so, uh, but you know, probably two weeks would be a good amount of time to think of when the next one is. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. Congratulations, Meritocratic Mafia. You win a Spunky Princess shirt. The answer was 20 seconds indeed. That train left 20 seconds early and people are like, how could you leave 20 seconds early? Uh, the second place winner was Kana with, uh, and the third was Junie. But uh, Meritocratic Mafia, your first place with the shirt. Congratulations and fellow explorers. I always enjoy hanging out with y'all. If you haven't hit that thumbs up button yet, I would appreciate it, and the Yellow Productions crew would appreciate it if you do. And as usual, I'm going to see you all on the next video.